Good morning. This is Faith at uh, Faith in Books. This sort of halo effect on my. I don't know how to. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to do um, Saturday Shakespeare or Shakespeare Saturday. I always forget what I call things. I could get interrupted in any second by the little guy. And I heard movement already, so I don't know. You know, I'll just do as much as I can get done. So, um. I, I'm enjoying the reading through this book and really getting, you know, uh, getting an in into Shakespeare just by going through the um, the different phrases that have become so popular and really integrated into our um, everyday conversation. So let's see. I think where did I leave off? Uh oh, I should have. Uh, I think. Did I do frailty, thy name is woman? I don't think, did I do that? I don't think I did. That's from Hamlet. He's talking about, um, what's her face? Ophelia. Uh, I can't remember if I did this or not. Hmm. I'm, I'm very sleepy. <laughs> right now, <laughs> I'm not firing on all cil cylinders. Okay, frailty, thy name is woman. woman. Hamlet says, heaven and earth, must I remember why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown? Oh, no, this, this is, oh, I'm confusing my place. Um, by what it fed on, and yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. Oh, yeah, I think I did talk about this one. So this is Hamlet being upset with his mother for her affair and then marriage to her, his uncle. So the next one is Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lend Me Your Ears. And this is from Julius Caesar. And I love Julius Caesar because that was the play where I finally got Shakespeare. I'd been trying and then sort of dismissing Shakespeare, thinking of myself as somebody who just wasn't sophisticated enough. And then I saw Julius Caesar and I got it. And that was when I really was you know, just kind of gobsmacked by his brilliance. So this is Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lend Me Your Ears. And this is a really good lesson in rhetoric, good rhetoric. So Marcus Antonius says, Friends, or Mark Anthony, you know, Friends, Romans, Countrymen, Lend Me Your Ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. So outside of Hamlet, those I'm reading what the guy says, uh, these are likely the most quoted of all Shakespeare's lines. Almost never quoted, however, are the lines Antony is parodying. The opening words of Brutus's earlier oration, where he says, Romans, countrymen, and lovers, hear me for my cause, and be silent that you may hear. Antony later disingenuously claims that I am no orator, as Brutus is. Yet his modifications of Brutus's formula, formulaic oratory are the first hint that he knows his business. Just compare the deft escalation of rhythm in Friends, Romans, Countrymen with the metric jangle of Romans, Countrymen, and Lovers. Note the arrogance of Be Silent versus the mock humility of Lend Me Your Ears. The contrast is more than literary. Brutus, one of Ca uh, Caesar's assassins, insists he took part in the conspiracy in order to preserve Roman liberties. Yet Anthony's rhetoric seems much more democratic. Anthony skillfully manipulates the crowd where Brutus lectured to it. So yeah, that's a great speech. Hmm. So uh, the next one is full circle, which I use a lot if something's come full circle. Um, and so it is from King Lear. So a character named Edgar says, the gods are just and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. The dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes. Edmund, the has spoken right tis true. The wheel is come full circle. I am here. Full circle is Edmund's coinage, and he employs a now rare meaning of full, meaning complete, which I don't know if if something's full, isn't it complete? I don't know. Um, the, the pleat part of complete comes from the Latin um, word for, for full, plena, uh, or plenus. It's in the um, 
Hail Mary and laugh, uh, full of full of grace. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune has completed its circuit and Edmund's own villainous acts have returned to haunt him. So I don't, um, I don't really know the story of King Lear. I sort of am getting more and more of it from these quotes. Um, but it means, uh, we mean, and it's close to what Edmund means, that someone's actions have passed through phases only to return to their starting point, right? But and I don't agree with the author, he says, but we no longer ascribe the outcome to the inevitable workings of fate. Maybe we do or don't. Um, anyway, he goes on to explain why. There are a lot of people with E names in this play. There's an Edmund and an Edgar. Um, but he explains the plot of the play and why. Uh, Edmund is saying things have come full circle. So anyway, I do use that phrase a lot. Then there's this get thee to a nunnery, which is a famous thing. I don't think I ever use it, but I've heard it. Uh, and this is also from Hamlet. And Hamlet is toying with uh, Ophelia. Hamlet says, I did love you once, Ophelia. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. Hamlet, you should not have believed me, for virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. So he's just, you know, first he says he loves her, and then he says he didn't love her. Ophelia, I was the more deceived. Hamlet, get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? So, um... So he's saying, you know, go into the convent, don't have any children who are sinners like me. Um, and uh, I don't know why that's a famous saying. I mean, I don't use it in everyday life. But the thing is, people always want to put in like a body spin on things. And it's true, Shakespeare was, you know, had a lot of bodily humor and, you know, a body sense of humor. But I think they stretch it. Um, because they want to say that nunnery was a, uh, a euphemism for brothel. But how does that make sense? If he's saying, don't have any more sinners like me, why would you say go to a brothel? That makes no sense. So I feel like they just, a lot of these Shakespeare critics, they really kind of get off on, on, on putting the bodiest, most, you know, crudest, vulgarest spin on what he's saying. Oh, I heard a noise. Like maybe a little boy is emerging from his room. Nope. All right, I'll keep going. Anyway, so that's one thing. That's one reason why I don't really trust um, Shakespeare interpreters because they just seem to have be, have this juvenile glee when it comes to that. Um, gilded monuments. This is from Sonnet Fifty Five. I'm gonna skip it. I'm sorry that I'm just not into the sonnets. I really am. But I don't understand that I've never used the phrase. I am not familiar with the poem. And then the next one also, the glass of fashion. That's also from Hamlet. I have not heard that phrase before. I've seen Hamlet. I don't even remember it. So I'm going to skip that one. And I'm going to go to good riddance. Because I use that phrase all the time. When, you know, I mean, good riddance. Whenever, whenever something's been a pain or someone's been a pain, they finally go away and bow. You know, I often think or say, oh, well, good riddance. So this comes from Troilus and Cressida, Act Two, and I am not familiar with this play. I think someone might have be doing it for Shake Two. I can't remember. I haven't, I've only watched one video for Shake, Shake Two, and that was um, Lukash at Totally Pretentious. Um, so I, maybe I'll catch up this weekend. Last week I was so busy. I hardly got any rest at all. Anyway, good riddance. So Ajax says, I shall cut out your tongue. Um, there's cities. Tis no matter. I shall speak as much as thou afterwards. Patroclus, no more words, there's cities. Peace, there's cities. Uh, I will hold my peace when Achilles Brock bids me. Shall I? Achilles, there's for you, Patroclus. There's cities. I will see you hanged like clatpoles ere I come any more to your tents. I will keep where there is wit stirring and leave the faction of fools. And he leaves. Patroclus, a good riddance. So anyway, he goes on about saying that people in, um, back then, like, let's see, they don't list any um, use of, 
a good riddance before 1782, but Portia in Merchant of Venice says a gentle riddance, and she meant glad to be rid of you, like a gentle goodbye or something. Um, so we, we don't say a good riddance, we say just good riddance. And so it's more of a, this guy says, it's more of an expletive than it is a description. Riddance was actually a noun, though, so you could modify it with good, gentle, fair, but we don't think of it like that. We're just like, get lost kind of thing. Um, so anyway, it's interesting that that phrase that I use a lot um, comes from Shakespeare. Uh, then the next one, the green-eyed monster, and I do use that phrase. That's pretty common. And that's from Othello. Iago, oh, beware, my lord of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster with which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his wronger. But oh, what damned minutes tells he or who dotes yet doubts, suspects yet strongly loves. Othello, oh, misery. So anyway, just this idea that jealousy can be re represented by this color. Um, and that apparently that was, um, that was, um, Renaissance Englishmen often paired colors with emotions or personal qualities. So, and it had to do with bodily fluids, you know, they thought your humors affected your temperament. Um, so anyway, so Green Eyed Monster comes from Othello. Uh, oh, and I love this one, Hath Not a Jew Eyes. <clears throat> Because uh, it makes you think about anti-Semitism and how even in Shakespeare's time, people were sympathetic to, to the plight of Jews. I mean, not enough to really uh, change much, but, um, but he just so, um, what's the word, so eloquently puts it in this play. It's a complicated play, I think, The Merchant of Venice. Um, so hath not a Jew eyes, so Shylock says, uh, I am a Jew, hath not a Jew eyes, hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, senses, affections, passions, fed with the same food, hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases, healed by the same means, warmed and cooled by the same winter and summer as a Christian is? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? And if you wrong us, do we not revenge? If we are like you in the rest, we will resemble you in that. So it's only human to want to seek revenge. <clears throat> it's not good, but it's human. Um, and Jews are human. So, so that, that's a really uh, compelling speech, a really, a really good bit of, of rhetoric there, too. <clears throat> oh, I guess a coffee. Hmm. And let's see, and then I also um, use in my heart of hearts, and I thought this was interesting because we say in my heart of hearts, like plural, um, but that doesn't make sense because in the in Hamlet, when he uses it, he actually says in my heart of heart, and what he's doing is it's a little pun on, it means the same thing as my heart's core. So in the core of my heart, in the very center of my heart. But we use the word heart for that, right? At the heart of the matter, right? So why we changed it to in my heart of hearts, we only have one heart, right? Um, when it really should be in my heart of heart, in the core of my heart. So here it's from Hamlet says, Hamlet says, um, give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I in my heart of heart, as I do thee. <clears throat> so that, I thought that was interesting that we sort of changed it to my heart of hearts. He says that it's sort of like vanity of vanities, like we're thinking in that sort of way, that metaphorical way, but he but but Shakespeare really meant it in my heart's core, in my heart, in the heart of my heart. So, and I do use that phrase. I don't know how, but I know I've used it. And the next one too, heart on my sleeve, wearing your heart on your sleeve. Wow, it's already fourteen minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna end here. Um, this is also from Othello, Iago. It is as sure as you are, Rodrigo. Ro Rod Rodrigo, Ooh, can't say, can't read. Uh, were I the more, I would not be Iago. In following him, I follow but myself. 
Heaven is my judge, not I for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. For when my outward action doth demonstrate the native act and figure of my heart in complement extern, tis not long after, but I will wear my heart upon my sleeve for daws to peck at. I am not what I am. So he's he's giving his philosophy of why he's so deceptive because he thinks if people know what you really want, um, your real motivations, then you're you're vulnerable. So he's so full of duplicity um, that he would never wear his heart on his sleeve. And um, and I I know I use that phrase. The next one, a hit, a very palpable hit. I think I'll stop. There's a lot of really good ones coming up. So anyway, I think though that's a long enough video. So um, um, hope you enjoy the Saturday Shakespeare. I I really am. Uh, enjoying it and I'm gonna watch some shake tube videos this weekend I'm vowing to myself so all right well take care and I will talk to you later bye bye